So today is today is the thirtieth, and as usual, let's start with our prayer. So we invite our mentors, the mentors of this group, the mentors of our families, our houses, to be here with us. And as well as those, the incarnated ones and discarnated ones that for sure they are here with us to learn same way we do, we try to. Dear Brother Jesus, as we gather here today to learn from the spirited teachings, from your loving message and from each other's life experience, we ask you please to come beside us now, lead us on our study today, it's ahead of us, and through those times, our mind cannot cope. Help us to find peace and calming in us. You hold us safe, dear Jesus, and please do the same for the this group, for our mentors here with us today, our family members, our houses, relatives, and all of those crossing our minds, crossing our hearts, all of those in need. And so be it. So it is. So it is. You know, um, every time we do, we do start a meeting like this, or every time we do a meeting in our houses or we read something, you know, uh, uh, a text like from the, 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 the spirit books or any. So if you read it out loud, it is good because the spirits, the higher beings, they do not waste time and they do not waste any uh teachings or any opportunities so for groups like this as we read as we say it out loud as we talk and discuss you know among us they bring discarnated ones they bring other spirits to learn what with us so it, it is not just us connected here but there are other beings as well I do not know if any of the the other mediums, if they see or if they sense something, but uh, it's not uncommon. Then when I sit in here, as soon as we start, I sense other beings here with us. And uh, some of them, they are here to protect us, to bring us light, you know, good vibration, good energies. And others, they are here to learn the same way, you know, but they are brought in. Go ahead, Hysink. Now, I just wanted to share, as you said, <clears throat> a lot of spirits who are here with us. And I want to confirm that because, you know, I've talked about St. Stephen speaking to a group in which my one of my priests was for seven years. And one when he came, he, he appeared when somebody went into trance. And then he came and says, am I invited to the party? And they said, which party? He says, there's a great deal of people here. You don't see them, but they're here to learn. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so I just wanted to, to, to share that. With exactly. You. So so you know what I'm talking about. You know, yeah. not, it's yeah. not uncommon when I no. say to be here, you know, I, 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 I sense that. And, um, or sometimes, for example, the... One of the, the the times that I was presenting, I studied in my spirit center. So I, I, I set up the computer and everything. I was sharing the computer. And as soon as I, I started, when I stand up and I was looking everybody in front of me, oh my goodness, it was very hard for me to, to continue without 
getting emotional because I was able to see way more discarnated people than people present, you know, incarnated people in that room. And it was, oh my goodness, you know, it's, it was a lot of people. So I was like, it was a very nice feeling, you know. So so you know that the spirits, the, the higher beings, they do not waste any opportunity. If whatever we are going to discuss is a good uh, lesson for, you know, other beings, yes, they, 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 they take the the advantage of that and they, they bring other people in. Um, all right, so again, uh, just a reminder, I know Louise and, and Leda and, and Maria, they know that, but uh, Missionaries of the Light is the next book that we are going to discuss. Uh, oh, I'm saying here the messengers, but it's Missionary of the Light. Uh, I have the book right here because I, I already started uh, read of, or rereading but um, we plan on perhaps by the end of the, the, the month we we shall start we probably we will start uh, the meetings to talk about this book it's a very nice uh, as a matter of fact it was the first one actually that I read from this series I, I like it very much um and folks about the our gathering in Pedro Leopoldo in Brazil photo context so I know lots of us we uploaded the photos so uh from now on I'm gonna uh talk to some folks to take a look at those and select the ones that they like most it was on purpose that I didn't put any name, anything, you know, we will, we will select a, our best photo, not knowing who took it. So it's going to be very democratic. <laughs> and, um, but I will send a link to you all and uh, just, you know, um, Take a look and uh, pick your, your best. And where, where do I upload the photos, uh, Anna? To the Google Drive. I, I sent an email with a, ah, with a yes. link. Okay. If you do I not have that. that email anymore, let me know because I, I can send you. Okay. I forgot yeah. this. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I may send this to somebody else. Mm, it can't be one of us. <laughs> It cannot be one of them. <laughs> but I'll send to somebody else and that person will pick the best photo, you know. Uh, and then I will show the photo and whoever took it, just say it, you know. It was mine. Um, okay, so this is what I would like to share with you today. You, uh, the, the, the folks that came with us to uh, the to the visit to Pedro Leopoldo. Remember, we went to uh, the Chico's house first. And then after that, we went to the Spirit Center that Chico founded. The first one, remember? Remember, Len? We were, yes. we were yes. there. Remember yes. this table? Mm -hmm. So yes. this table, if, 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 if just just a quick recap here but uh the first spirit center that she could found it was actually a house that many years ago belonged to the family so he was able to buy that house again and uh he found it he used that place to be the center, the spirit center, the first spirit center. On the back of the house, there is this big uh, room. It could be like the same size as a, a large conference room. 
And in one of the corners, there is this table right here. It's a, it's a big table. Well, this is the very table that Chico used to psychograph his, his letters, consoling letters. So he was sitting somewhere in here, lots of people because over here in, in front of this table, lots of benches and chairs, you know, for many people. So, so they were going there. Chico was here in trance and just psychographing letters. So this is the same table. Some of us, you know, well, was was here. Some of us did touch this table, etc. And the uh the lady that came from Spain, uh, uh, Fernanda. She oh uh, not Fernanda uh Alejandra. She uh she did something different, and the, and I saw what she did when. The, the group left this room. She got her cell phone with the recording, the recorder on, and then she just put the, the, the phone on top of this table. She, she was right here, and then she put the, the phone on top of this. I, I, I even have a video with that. I just, for some reason, I didn't find the video. But I saw when she put the, the phone on top of the, the table with the recorder, a, a, an app on. And the group left the room. So she was just recording whatever, the, the, the sound in the ambient, okay? And then yesterday she sent me what she was able to record. I'm gonna play right now so you tell me whether or not you can hear something. I'm gonna play again. It is the voice of her husband saying in in Portuguese I am Guillermo. It's the very oh. beginning and then he says something that she 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 was not able to understand and it's very you know but uh you can tell it's nobody else's voice and she said Anna what is, is, is most amazing to me is it is exactly his voice and the way that he he was he used to speak so i'm gonna play again and at the very first milliseconds he's saying this he's saying eu sou guillermo i am guillermo so let me play again <laughs> You got it? Yep. Eu sou Guilherme. Is it? Yeah. It, I, I saw the very same moment she did that. She put the phone in there. Nobody else in the room but her quiet. I was in the door. And everybody was in the, another room. And she was able to record that. Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing. It happens all the time. And your people record this out in the woods. And they get and they hear people talking. It it is amazing. The, the, the spirits are there and, and the voice. So <laughs> this is not not strange at all, but it, it does happen. There are more audios as well. I just brought this because, you know, today's is, is quick thing, but there are more videos and uh, audios and amazing. Go ahead, Lynn. 
Well, a few things. Obviously, our husband is with her. That's the obvious. Yeah. But there's a lot of information, a lot of data that the other side is, and we go back to the physics, is superimposed on this side. We're separated literally by three feet, three feet. And there's a lot of information data supporting this. So it's it's basically, I as I always say, we're not separated from our loved ones by distance. We're separated from our loved ones by physics. So Absolutely. it's superimposed almost on this side. You look at the physics of the dimensions, all right? Yep. So this easily, and there's a lot of showing about the voices and everything. There's a lot of information on that. But this easily supports that concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Luis, leave you. I remember uh, when we were studying message, messengers, the messengers, you asked me to speak a bit, a little bit about a part of the passage, remember? Mm -hmm. We ended up not speaking. I I pulled a little bit of this passage. If you don't have, if you don't mind, could speak a little bit about that, don't you think? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Do yeah. you want me? Do you want to share anything? Do you want me? Yes, to... I'd like to share okay, something let because me... I found this place for us. Let me uh allow me to do that. Yes, please. Yeah, let me invite you to be the host. Just a second. Yes. All right. Thank you. Well, while we were studying, uh, one of the things I find very beautiful is the universal uh, synchronicities in the spirit teachings, right? And then the uh, literature by Chico Xavier and by their, his spirits are wonderfully um, uh, surrounded by these synchronicities, that these coincidences of knowledge. And I got one of the parts of this book is a part, it's a chapter. The chapter is called, let me see if I can share it. Chapter is called uh, uh, Those Who Sleep. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're there talking were, about it. Yeah. yeah. There were pavilions of pavilions of uh, spirits who were sleeping in a very dreadful situation. Sometimes they look like uh, uh, corpses only there, dad. Mummies, mummies, right? Mummies, yes. Andrea Louise was very kind of scared about, of the situation. And he, he asked the instructor and they say, and ask, explain this to me for God's sake. What is this place? Some sort of house of death after death. <laughs> and the instructor said, yes, Andre, this sleep is truly an advanced picture of that. Under the blessing of this shelter, there are several thousands of our brothers and sisters who are still asleep. Mm -hmm. There are individuals who never surrendered to the active and renewing good around them, particularly those who were thoroughly convinced that death meant nothingness, the end of everything, eternal sleep. The belief in a higher life is an, ex is an incessant activity of the soul. Rust attacks the unused hole. Mm -hmm. Lethargy invades the spirit devoid of a creative ideal. The men and women that believe in eternal life, even while they are still in the physical realm, or even though they may not be Christians or all the like, per se, are developing faculties of the spiritual movement. They can thus enter the extraterrestrial realms in an animate state, at least in terms of more or less precise locomotion, and sense of judgment. However, individuals who persevere in deliberate and complete denial, despite sometimes being affiliated with outward forms of religious activity, are truly unfortunate because in actuality, they see nothing <clears throat> beyond the flesh, nor do they desire any spiritual knowledge whatsoever. Many enter our arenas of service like living embryos in the eternally divine womb of nature. A friend of ours calls them fetus spirits. However, in my opinion, they would be happy if they actually were in the beginning condition, in that beginning condition. We are certain that many have completely refused contact with faith out of criminal in, in, indifference toward the designs of the eternal. And they, 
they he continued, they sleep because they have been magnetized by their own neg negativist concepts. And they their beliefs, right? That they, yes. they remain paralyzed because they prefer narrow mindness to understanding. Nonetheless, the day will come when they must wake up and pay their debts. This is why I regard them as suffering spirits. First, they linger in the sleep they believed in. Later on, they wake up. Most of them, however, cannot escape physical and mental illness, just as what happened to those demented brothers and sisters whom I saw. So it's a very profound chapter about this. And it reminds us that uh, even uh, just Alan Kadat says something like this too, Shiko and uh, many others, that when the, the very belief in an afterlife is something so important to humanity. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're a Christian, all the doctrine of Jesus Christ is based on that. If you base the doc Jesus Christ doctrine on life only here, you will become a uh, uh, a religion, <laughs> mm -hmm. the way religions treat mm -hmm. this stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. all his doctrine is about spirit. So uh, I remember there's a video in my channel, Spirit Connections, right? About the Harrison's family. Harrison family is a family in, in England that in 1940s, they had a circle with materializations, a very good circle because it was a very fa familial meeting and people were very friendly and this of course uh, helps a lot and I uh, set aside a part of this video to show you speaking about a guy who took part in a spiritist a spiritualist church in England and uh, he uh, he died he passed away and after that soon after that he materialized in a session I wasn't gonna show you I think you're uh, gonna uh, you know, you're gonna understand what I mean. What is the relation between this guy and the? So, so Luis, before before you you do that, so just want to to reinforce. So, mm -hmm. whatever your belief is, that's exactly the same way you will transition to the afterlife. So, if you believe, if your belief is, once you you pass away, you will dive into this deep sleep and then you'll be waiting as a soul, you'll be waiting for Jesus to come over and wake us up. That's exactly what's going to happen. You will be in this very deep sleep. If you do not believe in afterlife, it's, that's it then you will be in deep sleep. You will not, you will not open your eyes because you believe that you're dead, 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 and there is no, nothing else for you to do, right? So I remember the book says something about it saying, well, they, they are like all these people laying down in this room. They are this way because that's what they believe before they die. The important thing, uh, Anna, Corroborating what thought you said is that they, this belief has to be something that is layered down in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because many times we think we believe in the spirituality. Yeah. That's why I've I've seen many. Oh, I be I may be speaking about myself here, okay, people. I'm not to put that person in any judgment. Oh, yeah. Somebody. But I've seen people that they think they believe in spirituality. So much so that they don't like phenomena because the phenomena can, you know, push them against the wall in terms of belief, right? So, look at this video, it's an old one, right? But I think you can enjoy it. Like a look, there is a Portuguese subtitles, right? Jack Graham was very good when he came, wasn't he? Do you remember Jack coming? Yes, Jack Graham came. Uh, he... He was a very nice chap, and uh, he had been a Plymouth Brethren, and he fell out with the Plymouth Brethren, and uh, uh, he was talking to Tom, and Tom told him about our service, so eventually we gave him an invitation. Do you know, it took us a full year before Jack Green was able to come to our circle, yes. Mm. yes. 
Mm. Well, it was. It, it, when we invited people, it wasn't said they were coming next week. No. Mm -hmm. However, I remember Jack Graham, a voice came through the trumpet and said, Hello, Jack. Who is it? It's Edna. Edna. It's Edna. And Jack was Edna, who? Oh. You cut it, Edna. Well, good pals work with Jack. Oh, my cousin Ed. Well, you know, I think it was a month after that that Jack Graham always got up on a Sunday morning to make his wife a cup of tea. And he didn't get up, he was dead. He mm. died in bed. It was a week. Oh, it was only a week, was it? Yes. But within a month he was talking through this trumpet in our circle. Mm. And we said, Jack, well, what, how did you find yourself at Pastover? He said, uh, it was Edna, my cousin, who met me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said it was a great help. The fact that he knew that there is life after death. You see, it's such a, an important factor of this knowledge that it made it easy for me. So we said, well, have you met any of your old friends, your Plymouth brethren? Yes, he says, and they lie in a stupor. <laughs> hey, turns so he's talking about the friends that had been in this spiritualist church, Plymouth Bethren, and were there now on the spiritual side. And he said that it was very important for him to be in the meeting, in the materialization meeting, where his cousin had come through, had spoken through the trumpet, that this gave him a more serious belief in the afterlife, which helped him a lot when he passed. Yes. And, 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 and the others that took part in the spiritualist church with in this, this state of torpor, right? Mm -hmm. Linus Chopper. Yes. yes. Chopper, yeah. And when you go and shake and say, come on, you passed on, you know. How can I be passed on? I'm in the physical body. I'm not passed on. I can't pass it on. <laughs> in that belief of how it's like hypnotic. They're in that hypnotic trance because of their beliefs. Now, that's a fact what happens in the spirit world. Yeah. Well, okay, guys, see, the guys were spiritualists, mm -hmm. but they have great difficulty believing in the true aspect and even the physical aspect of spirituality. Right? They couldn't believe, oh, come on, how come I died? I have a body. I, have, yes. I can feel right the air in my lungs, the blood yes. in my veins. So it's impossible, right? So that's it. Maybe we need to be very careful about even about your spiritual beliefs. You know? <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, this week I was, uh, I started reading a book and uh, it started exactly the same way like uh, Astro City. Mm -hmm. when Andrea Luis realized that he was, you know, in a different plane. So the guy, he woke up and and all of a sudden he said, okay, so what's going on? Which place this is? I'm so hungry. Why am I so hungry? I'm so thirsty. And he's, he can feel his body. But then once he realized, because he met somebody that he knew was you know, died like 17 years ago. So, oh, if I see you, if I can touch you, it means that I'm also in the same plane as you. And then the guy said, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. you are. And then he said, why am I here? I have been some, such a very nice person, you know, working in the spirit center, helping everybody, doing everything you know helping with the 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 studies and the, doing all the charities uh programs etc etc so what am i doing here you know i feel so hungry and thirsty and I'm, I'm, i feel myself in terrible condition what am i doing here so believe yeah. what, what do you have in deep down in your in your spirit, and I remember right? that he said he used the word hypnosis. It's the same word that Andre Luis's uh, structures uh, used, right? Mm -hmm. They are in the self hypnosis. 
and and we need to be very careful. That's why the universal teachings of the spirit is something that Kardec used to bring forth all the time. See what's universal. See what's going on here and there, and everybody is kind of receiving as piece of news, so that you don't fall into uh, traps of your spirituality. Right? Mm. Okay. Hi, Cis wants to speak. No. No. Okay. Again, again, it's just to <clears throat> to correlate what you said. Um, mm -hmm. In the book written by Helen Greaves, Wheels of Eternity, she had bought the house, remodeled it, and then noticed that there was a spirit by the fireplace. And so she said, hello, she said, what are you doing in my house? So she said, this is my house. Uh -huh. I bought it and it's remodeled. No, she said, mistress gave me this house. She was a maid for the big house and she had been given this cottage. Mm -hmm. But it had been remodeled and so forth. And now um, Francis, Helen was living in, in, in the house. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. talked and said, I have to tell you that you have passed on. I'm not dead, she said. You are dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> so she had a little talk and she said, okay, um, can you go into town and then see, maybe you could find a doctor and so forth. So oh, she, and she said, can't find a doctor. I didn't know my way around. But, but, but I met my mom and mm -hmm. she told me, she talked and she said, I couldn't remember the Our Father. My mom said, and I couldn't. And oh. gradually she understood that she was dead. So this is a situation, yeah? Yes. And and there's a situation of a disson cognitive dissonance. It's uh, mm -hmm. the fear of this brand new situation is so <laughs> strong that you start forgetting things that may bring you evidence that you are dead. Just like these guys who are very skeptical, right? And they face the reality of the paranormal phenomenon. They just can't bear it. They get angry. They, you know, this is what psychologists call the cognitive dissonance. Go on, Len, please. Well, there's several concepts. Uh, the first is we've all been on these spiritual groups and Zooms, etc., And the ones that in fairness to them, they believe, but then they really don't believe because they never really experienced the other side. They never really experienced the, the spirit world, the universe, really for themselves. But when you re but then there's the others who actually have experienced it extensively. That's no longer a belief. You know. You simply know. It's a fact. Uh, then there's always those... I see it all the time. I call it the blind mind. The blind mind, they don't have faith or belief in what in the afterlife. They have an empty heart. They simply have an empty heart. That's the result of it. Um, and a lot of times you get these skeptics. Now, there's many different, there's, it's good to be skeptic and challenge and ask questions. That's important. But to be an open-minded skeptic. But you get always that her closed-minded, blind mind, they're never going to learn new things. How are you ever going to learn new things if you're always closed-minded? Never, never. And I ask them sometimes, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of the love that we're eternal? What's wrong with being eternal? I mean, we're, we're immortal. Are you afraid of the love? A lot of times they actually, they're, you know, everyone's different. They're afraid of the love. Am I making sense here? you know so you you get the different types all right but i think once you experience truly experience the other side of the universe you don't it's not belief anymore you know you just know yeah yeah and you mentioned uh an important point you know uh one thing is to know the other thing is to apply what you know, but applying like from your heart. Mm -hmm. Because 
in this book that I'm talking about that I start reading this week, uh, the guy, he, he knew because he was a spiritist. So he was doing everything. He was doing charity, et cetera, et cetera. He was very active in his spiritist center. But at some point, everything that he was doing, including his studies, they were more mechanic type of thing, activity than bringing that knowledge to the heart and, and doing and applying that knowledge, you know, like with his heart in it. So when you talk about empty heart, that reminded me that's exactly, you know, when people know and, and they, they know how it is, it makes totally sense. But if you do not attach your heart to that knowledge, guys, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to be good, right? That knowledge by itself will not give you a pass that everything is going to be fine. You know, a ticket to a very nice place. No. You have to, to to attach the the heart to that knowledge, and the other thing is, keep open minded, keep being open minded, because whatever we learn and whatever we find out, we realize or we we uh became aware of, it's gonna be a very a small piece of the reality of the true reality, right? Luis, please. Uh, it reminds me once I was in a spiritual center. It was very funny. Olivia was uh, the lecturer of the night. And she was speaking to people the way she usually does. She's very calm, right? Very relaxing way of speaking. Suddenly, out of nothing, she turned to be a little bit uh, adamant and speaking with a stronger voice and calling people's attention and uh, she ended up saying, look, guys, I'm not speaking here about Casper, ghosts or imaginary things, right? I'm talking to, because uh, I, as, uh, later on, she explained to me, Sergio, I was inspired to speak like that because as I looked at people in the audience, people were just, you know, daydreaming. And they uh, uh, all the, most of the audience uh, regarded my speech as I, as if I were speaking about something, you know, uh, Walt Disney stories. Uh, <laughs> yes, hey, it looks to like carry they, them. They, right. they were going like just like going to a church. Yeah, they're going to see a, a, a free scene. A yeah. It was my can another day in the park. Let's right. speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's speak about spirit for a change, you know, mm -hmm. for a yeah, change. And everybody I there felt... sitting like this. It was nine o'clock p.m. Right. Yes. <laughs> I think I got the feeling of the spiritual guide of the place. Yeah. And he came to me. Talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> I never talked like that. Yes. Luis was what happened? Not to you. you? <laughs> <Just> look. <laughs> it was going on. <laughs> <laughs> it was very strange said, to me either. Said, wow, my I was I was, you know, was caught up by a yeah. very strong energy of uh, outraging feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but, I couldn't I couldn't handle that. I, I had to talk like that. Was but anyway, but it was very good. Everybody, you know, yeah. sat right up okay on the chair and paid attention. Okay, yes. <laughs> You're talking about spirits, but the spirits really really exist, don't they? Yes, they do. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> Lynn, please. No, it's it's you always say like at church, everybody's going through the motions, the reflex. They just go through the motions, but it's not really meaningful. No, I think one great a great attribute of all this is not only just the full heart of love and and uh you have a, a good mind in terms of uh a healthy knowing that there is an afterlife, is you're not afraid of death. I get that all the time. Uh, I says, what's there to be afraid of when, how can you be afraid of something that doesn't exist? And I get, and they, I get funny looks. I says, 
I'm not afraid at all. Not in the least. I said, because it doesn't exist. If you would have said that to me seven, eight years ago, I might, my viewpoint would have been different. But after you know and you experience in your heart, you actually physically experience it. I'm not afraid in the least. Mm -hmm. Not in the least. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Lynn. Gloria, That's please. That's another big advantage. <laughs> yes. Well, well, those of you who were in Brazil, you discussed this, but when I just dropped in on that Saturday, the Bible verse that uh, was up was John 17, 5, and I wrote it down because I thought, there's a reason I'm saying this. And it was, now, Father, glorify me in your presence with that glory I had with you before world existed. Mm -hmm. We are eternal beings. It just, I read that. I couldn't hear you. I, you couldn't hear me. <laughs> but that verse, I'm right now I'm getting chill bumps all over. Um and, and we all have stories. Uh, three years ago, my grandson died of a fentanyl overdose. It was accidental. He took something and it had fentanyl in it. And, you know, tens of thousands of people are dying every year in the United States from fentanyl overdose That's now. Bad. Very bad. And five days after I was, I was just broken. My son was broken. This was his only son. And um, I, at that time, I was attending uh, Sandra Champlain's Sunday services. And they had uh, two mediums from Scotland who would give evidential readings. Mm -hmm. Five days after my grandmother died, a woman in Scotland with hundreds of people on the Zoom said, I have a message for Paul, my son. And she gave him the most beautiful, evidential message that healed his heart five days after his only son mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. There's, you can't deny. No. You cannot no. deny. And he's... He's come through several times since then, and he's in such a good place. And it was an accident, mm -hmm. but he took full responsibility for it. Congratulations, because when things like this happen, is more than likely because you, your son, yourself, the family had the merit. I for prayed something like that, this. Yeah. Something. You, you had the merit. And he was in Delaware and I was in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. This medium was in Scotland and Sandra is, I think she's in New York and she puts the Zoom on and Nick comes through and it was just the most wonderful. And that, Lynn, is when I shifted from believing. I got, I begged him to get on there that day. I begged him to get on and I prayed and Nick showed up five days, five days. He showed up yeah. and it was, it was just, uh, that's, that's when, yeah, I believe I was believing, you know, I had my son tune in that day to that zoom, but now I know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, Lynn, <laughs> it's like John Edwards says, you can remember your first car. But you don't suffer about it, not having it anymore. It was just a vehicle. This is just a vehicle. It's just a vehicle. I'm not going to suffer about. Can you and, believe and you? Go back where I started to John 17, 5. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with that glory I had with you before the world existed. Yeah, so Can meaning. <laughs> you you were awake even before these eyes were opened for the first time. So uh, uh, the other thing as well that happens sometimes is, uh, you know, a few days after the transition, 
when a disease communicates to the family, sometimes is a work uh, that is done by the group of spirits, the, the mentors of the family, the mentor of the deceased, helping the family with the grief process. So they they communicate, they, they send a message, they, they, they say something, you know, about the deceased just to, to help the family and to cope with the loss. Yeah, it's very, very nice. I mean, no way thing like this can be arranged, right? <laughs> oh, it was arranged. It was arranged, all right. Well, the other side did, but not us. <laughs> yes. No, no. I could I I think I wanted it so much that we did. We pulled I had I had help, but we pulled it off and it completely shifted my son. He's in such a good he's been in a he's been in a good place. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Thanks for sharing. Lynn. Yeah, just a few things. Uh, like that spiritual center in Belo Horizonte that we went to. Mm -hmm. That was a beautiful center. I mean, I was so impressed with that. And Luis asked me, the others to get up say a few words. And what did I say? I said, this temporary incarnate body, I call it the rented tuxedo. It's just a rented tuxedo. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that's all it is. It's just a rented tuxedo. Um, the other thing is about, they talk about the inception. The term that they use a lot on the other side, before earth time, before earth time at the inception of souls. These phrases they use a lot. The, the other thing is, I don't know if people realize how bad this fentanyl epidemic is. I talked to some of my colleagues. I know in the United States, I can't speak for Brazil or other parts of the world, but minute amount of fentanyl that now is laced a lot of different drugs, 10 to 20 milligrams is fatal. Wow. That's how potent this is. And it's become really a very, very serious epidemic in the United States in talking to a lot of my colleagues. I don't know what it's like in Brazil or uh, maybe leave, uh, Luis and Livia can yeah. say some words on that or or other places of the world. And thank you, thank you for sharing really this. Very serious problem. Thank you for sharing this, uh, Lynn, because this is coming from a doctor. I mean, you were, as a doctor, you're saying this. A lot of my colleagues are saying, you know, who now are mm -hmm. working in the, in the emergency rooms, you know, in the emergency rooms, in the various hospitals, they're seeing all this. And what, what people don't realize though, minute amounts can be fatal and they're lacing all these drugs with this minute amounts of fentanyl so this is a very become a very very serious problem i know in the united states so i, I don't know what it's like in in other parts of the world it doesn't happen here maybe because because people don't have access of this very much in a drugstore or what else they they have to, they don't, they can't buy it here so okay. easily. So I don't know why it happened so much in there. Well, I... We're going to the, uh, the apex of materialism all over the world, right? Yeah. And people who have uh, resources and people who are satisfied are in danger. Because when you're satisfied, where else are you going to? If you don't believe in something that goes beyond, right? Yeah. So it's... Uh, we are really living what was predicted, right? The apex of uh, materialism in the world, right? If you want to take a look at uh, Kardec's opinion about materialism, at the end of this book, we're studying the Spirit's book, the conclusion, he speaks wonderfully and very prophetically about what was going to happen to society if it became surely materialist, right? Yeah, and people can buy fentanyl there in the United States easily. Yeah. Yes, yes, a lot of uh, well, the thing is they buy like say uh marijuana, we'll say. And there's a lot of marijuana that's laced now, they're lacing with fentanyl. Wow. So yeah, marijuana, you know, is becoming legal in the United States and a lot of states, but that's done through government uh uh controlled agencies. But there's also a lot of marijuana that's in the black market mm -hmm. and they're being laced with fentanyl. And but, this is really killing and literally dangerous. killing a lot of yes, people. It, we have but that's criminal. 
Yep. Yeah. Yes, yeah. of course. Yes. There are some uh, anesthesians, uh, anesthesians, uh, say anesthesists. And anesthesians. Anesthesians here that they maybe they get they get it to themselves, but they know the doses. They and even though even though they get some overdoses sometimes. Mm -hmm. So apply on themselves. Uh, yes, apply on themselves. It's mm -hmm. very it's very dangerous. It's strange. Oh. Glenn, they they can't buy it here, no, no Glenn. Okay. Yes, you know, do you know they, where, they where Chico Xavier witnessed the worst cases of obsession, according yeah. to him? New York City. Really? Yeah. When? Well, this is what, what, what time frame? 1950s. No, 1960s. Right? <laughs> 1960s. I was living in New York City at that time. That's my hometown. All right, but maybe he's not talking about. There's another you. book I'm going to write, and that is "Surviving the Jungle Called the Bronx." Yeah, "Surviving the Jungle Called the Bronx." Chick Xavier was on a trip there, so you know because oh, yeah. of spiritism, and he could see on the streets the worst cases of obsessions he had ever seen, right? Because he had already traveled to Europe, other places in Brazil, but. But in New York City, he said, "Oh my God, this this I've never seen such a." serious cases and of course it will end up in the situations we are witnessing nowadays right mm -hmm. so people it's a lot of work to do a group like this doesn't happen you know for nothing it's a it's a lot of work to do in our nations right a very important nations united states for example is a nation that's a model in many ways or has been right so it's important that youth groups be formed Mm -hmm. In the United States, in Brazil, uh, I'm, I'm, I've, I've always been worried about forming, setting up youth groups, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to convince them to, to grab this knowledge. Otherwise, the situations can be really, you know, dramatic to the world, right? Or more dramatic than you, 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 it is now. Yeah, so, so Deb is saying something. She had a foot surgery this this week and they gave her some fentanyl mm -hmm. as an anesthesia yes, yes. only for the surgery uh, okay that yes is... it's for anesthesia it's very <laughs> useful yeah, yeah but they can't send it for everyone yes and gave it to everyone well, people use everything as drugs nowadays right they can yeah. never mixture or whatever they want to that makes any effects that can uh, take them out. I, I saw a story of a girl in the United States yesterday that she was she had been in a, at a party for 48 hours and she had a kind of a nervous breakdown. I don't know what happened to her. She went to a church and removed her eyes mm -hmm. with two one with an object. The police came, she was shouting and screaming, everybody trying to help her, and now she's blind. But she said, my situation today is much better than the situation uh, when I was, when I could, when I could see. <laughs> see my the, goodness. The, the amount of uh, spiritual, so you know, impairment and mental impairment we are uh, arriving at, you know. So it's really something that uh, uh, can, and it should be very closely uh, seen by spiritualists all over the world, people who are right, you know, and, and try to speak uh, bravely to young people. Well, oh, come on, you need to know this. You need to get to know about this because uh, you know otherwise and they, they need to have another sense of living, another yeah, another yeah. purpose. Yes, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. some some they don't have a feeling of purpose anymore because the the yeah. world is is, is ready. <laughs> Every mm -hmm. we have everything we need nowadays. Look at that wow. glory! Is it one hundred and seven thousand people? Two thousand and one alone. Mm -hmm. Wow! It. These people are, they have a dead heart. They don't have love in their heart. It's empty heart. Uh, they just it's like they just go through the motions of breathing and, and existing here, but th their heart and their mind are, are just blind and dead. Mm -hmm. So how do you- But, but look, this, this is so much in alignment with 
the the time that we are living right now and in the plan of you know transition this is really transitioning times yes when <laughs> we are moving from this world uh trial and atonement and transitioning to you know regeneration world so we we can and do expect something like this and we will experience even more because remember all those uh dark zones lower zones full of spirits that have been there for ages god knows for how long they are there well those zones they are being cleaned and how they do this incarnation yeah. reincarnation so all of a sudden we have a lot of people a lot of people they have no purpose in their life no i mean they are kind of, this is their last chance yeah they don't I'm, have love I'm in their thinking, life i'm thinking Without of, love in your life what if we don't have love what do we have nothing yeah i didn't know have it maybe we should make a campaign to bring some young people here i don't know uh, laurie was very impressed about the young people in our group there in the meeting here mm -hmm. we have a lot of young people we still have some young we people some young coming i don't know how but they still coming mm -hmm. and maybe in united states we could do some campaign like that and call them and show them the the afterlife I, I don't we don't see young people in your groups we don't see youngers yeah yeah, yeah. So. every yeah. time that you have people you have group you you see mature folks but yeah. not yeah not so remember mature. there's a part in the uh in the, in the new testament right yeah. uh, a letter from the apostle paul to uh timothy and uh I look at this, look at the prediction. I think I've already read this, but it's good to remember. He said, also know that in the last days, and we are living these last days, the last days of the eon of the period of time, right? Mm -hmm. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, mm -hmm. truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, dis despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, look at religion, but denying the power mm -hmm. thereof. From such, turn away. <laughs> That's we're living exactly. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> yeah, it's exactly seeing exactly what's happening to David. Said in the last days things will be so everything is predicted. Everything is you know according to what high spirituality of the planet was had planned. But of course we should do something to avoid the worst because these uh, prophet these prophecies they come. To, for us to take action, to avoid them, not just to, okay, it's going to happen. I, I, I'm thinking maybe in a, in, a, in, a, in a big place like United States, in a big, uh, like Brazil, in a way, uh, maybe they think, ah, the parents think, ah, they don't have to think about spiritual life yet. They are very young. They have to live their lives. I don't know. Maybe they think like that. But if it is like that, they don't have purpose of living. They they don't have the life we had we had before. Yeah. The life the parents had, the purpose they had. They are searching for a better place, the, yeah. for a better world. Me Any as a teacher, many times I saw Brazilian parents completely unaware of the situation we live, yeah. because the uh, the 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 turning point, the turning of the the generation was so strong. After, for example, the wide band in the internet, the change was so that parents, they just didn't have, right? They were not aware of the situation. Sometimes they say, guys, pay attention to your children. Ah, oh, Lucas, you're very worried. I, when I was young, I used to do the same thing. Okay, but when you were young, 
was 20 years ago, and these two last decades were really devastating. It's a, it's a different world. A it very is. different world. The parents should pay attention to this, but it was difficult to convince them. Ah, no. And then, right, the situation come, right? It's a, mm -hmm. very serious indeed. Do you know what I find? And I've commented on this to several people. They don't see what I'm getting at. But when I was growing up, you told a lie, but you knew you were telling a lie. And you didn't want to be found out because if you your mother found out, you were in serious trouble. Serious <laughs> trouble. <laughs> and also, um, there was a certain amount of there was integrity mm -hmm. in people. Mm -hmm. And but now there isn't any. Mm -mm. And no this parameters. is what I see. No, no parameters now. No. Mm -mm. Just they have no parameters. So, okay. uh, honor. I think the word honor. Honor is a word that has been forgotten. That mm -hmm. many don't know how to spell anymore. Honor. honor. Uh, and conscience. And we said people had a, you had a conscience. Mm -hmm. I don't see that today among yes. the, the, the people in government, oh, for example. Don't want to talk about government. But just normally, I mean, people, this is just this gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it is something so interesting. Because what you said, Hyacinth, uh, reminded me of something that happened, story that happened to me. I was nine years old, and I still have that story so clear in my mind. Uh, my mom asked me to go to to a store to buy something for her she was cooking and uh, I went there it was a small store so I saw this guy um just uh fixing and you know cleaning up the the the, the products that was there for 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 sale you know and uh so I asked him what I was there to, to buy, and he gave me. And then I saw him throwing up a box. And throwing to, to, to the floor. And then I saw the box in the, you know, Brazil many years ago. You, we didn't have money. So anything we were using our imagination to play. So I saw that box, oh, I can do something nice, you know, a toy or something with this box. So I asked him to give me the box. I said, can, well, he was throwing away, but still I asked, can I have this box? So he said, yeah. When I picked up the box, I saw there was a steel, one small, um, uh, was something, you know, one of the products that was there in that box, there was still one remaining, you know, like an envelope or something. And it was something that I liked. It was a sweet stuff, like a candy. And there was still one there. He didn't know. But I said, hey, sorry, there's still one here. So he just Pick from my hand, grab it from my hand, and put it in his aisle over there, turn his back. And then I went home, and on my way home, I was thinking, what, you know, what happened here? Because he didn't even say thank you. I could keep that thing with me. But then it was something, as soon as I thought like this, a, a voice right there in the very back of my mind said mm -mm, you did the right thing what you were supposed to be doing that's honor that's integrity you know it's not him telling me how i was supposed to be doing you know regardless if it was he, he was grateful or not i was doing the right thing you you do the right thing when people are not watching yeah yeah yeah. What I tell all the many people I deal with, with uh, groups, etc. I tell them this: once you know where you came from, why you're here, 
and where you return to, that makes it so much easier navigating through this life. Yeah. Exactly. Precisely. Once a chapter. Know, okay. and, and you know, that's affected people. And actually has affected people in my quest one at a time to change people here in the brain. But, <laughs> but once you know where you came from, why you're here, where you return to, it makes it so much easier in your perspectives and navigating through this life. It really does. It does. Yes, and it reminds me of a chapter in the in the book, uh, The Gospel According to the Spiritism. I think it's chapter seven or seven thing. I don't remember. Duty. It's about duty. And it's, it's saying exactly what you're saying here. Uh, the duty of the heart, not the duty of profession, not just external duties, everybody's seeing what you're doing. The duty of the heart is the one God respects, I seem, because uh, nobody knows you are accomplishing that duty other than you and God, right? <laughs> this is the, the true integrity and honesty and honor. Very go. Oh, we instead got to the end, people. Yes, we are on top of the hour, folks. Uh, we didn't read the book, but I think it was a wonderful, wonderful discussion. You know, it's so nice, so great. Time just flies when we are together. We're having fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I wish you a wonderful yeah. week. And I hope to see you all next Saturday. See you. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Well. Yeah. Love you guys. Good tomorrow, uh, Gloria and Carol. Good foot recovery, Debbie. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you.